November 24th, Paul Carlson. Courage is looking death in the face and trusting that God is God. It was an early Tuesday morning when airplanes thundered over Stanleyville, a town perched along the Congo River, surrounded by jungle and magnificent waterfalls. It was a beautiful and busy place, and it was located directly in the middle of the African continent. In the center of the city sat a quaint Victorian hotel, and outside, on this day, the hotel was surrounded by angry mobs and guards with heavy weapons. Inside the walls of the hotel, three men huddled together and cried out for God to move amid the chaos and turmoil. The Congolese government and the rebels were in an uproar. The Congo had just gained independence from Belgium, and with no stable government in place, rebel groups took over. They were holding all white people hostage. The air was thick with hostility. Among the hostages was a medical missionary named Paul Carlson. In the middle of the chaos and noise, Paul grabbed his friends and placed their lives in God's hands. Paul knew nothing else could be done at this point. He had known that this moment would come. The past few months, life had been a whirlwind for Paul. He had been captured by the rebel army at his home, which was in the jungle of the Republic of Congo. That house was where he served as a doctor to many of the locals, providing a skill they needed. He loved them with everything in him. Now, at 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, the U.S. Air Force thundered overhead and woke Paul. He said, in days like this, we certainly have to leave the future in God's hands. Only two options remained. They would be rescued, or the rebels would use them as human shields against their opponents. The hotel that housed the captives was heavily guarded, and that made escape impossible. For a moment, everything was still. But then the guards rushed in and herded the captives out onto the street. Bullets were flying, and the rebels were shooting every which way. It was total chaos. In the gunfire, captives were hit with stray bullets, so many started running for protection, as did Paul and his friend Chuck. When they were running from the gunfire, they found a wall with a narrow space to fit through, but only one person could fit at a time. Paul ran to his friend Chuck and said, go! Chuck leaped over the wall, turned around to grab Paul, but it was too late. Bullets hit Paul's body and he fell to the ground. One of Paul's friends saw his Bible and removed it from his pocket. These short but powerful words were underlined. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In God's word, in Daniel 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, Your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Having super strength has its perks around the house, like this. But my powers don't help me overcome my struggle with pornography. The problem with quitting porn is that it doesn't matter how strong you are. It won't work if you try alone. Go to CovenantEyes.com today and sign up with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Being free of porn is worth it. Today, ask yourself this question. If you found yourself in a similar situation between life or death, like Paul Carlson did, where would you draw your strength from? Courage is looking death in the face and trusting that God is God. Hi, my name is Brad Hawkins, CEO of a cybersecurity company called SaferNet, and I just listened to a fantastic story about Paul, Paul Carlson, who truly understood the meaning of life. Uh, he gave up uh, his life first, the life of luxury that he had living in California, and secondly, his life as he followed God's, God's will in Africa. He understood that his life uh, was a life that 
began here, but it only began eternity. It wasn't our entire life. Uh, he chose to live life with eternity uh, in mind. His life ended a lot faster than he probably would have thought, but he is now living in eternity with all of his rewards intact. God's perspective is both heaven and on earth, where our perspective is just simply what we see here on this earth. God knows his plan for us, sometimes what we would say blessed and sometimes joining God in his suffering, but he knows what he's going to reward us with. And yes, sometimes that special reward comes uh, from suffering here on this earth for his name. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, uh, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Uh, Ruth 2.12 says, May the Lord repay you for what you've done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord. Uh, Revelations 2.10 says, Do not be afraid for what you are about to suffer. I tell you, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will let you live a victorious life, uh, unending, glorious future. Revelations 2.4, I saw the thrones which were seated and those who had been given the authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who would be killed because of their testimony about Jesus. They reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Um, I challenge you, your perspective is typically just here on this earth, but change your perspective to include God's perspective, including heaven. Be aware that God is watching and looking at everything that we do, looking for opportunities to store up treasures in heaven for us. And yes, what we do here on this earth does matter in heaven. He will reward you for your obedience. Thank you.